Hey everyone, Xeon over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Persona 3 Portable on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Mitch Vogel for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. In the early 2000s, Persona 3 was reworked and re-released a handful of times, and each new version brought along new story beats, characters, features, and quality of life improvements. But the topic of which one is the definitive edition isn't really as simple as one may think or hope. And that's because not a single version of Persona 3 truly has it all. But now Persona 3 has come to Switch and Atlas has chosen to bring back the PlayStation Portable version, Persona 3 Portable or P3P for short. And even though today it still feels like an aging handheld game, Persona 3 Portable shows that it's still got it where it counts, despite some drawbacks. Much like other releases in the series, Persona 3 Portable follows an ensemble cast of high school characters led by your silent protagonist, who in this case is a transfer student who returns to their hometown 10 years after the death of both of their parents. Things quickly take a darker turn when you experience the mysterious dark hour, a hidden liminal time just after midnight when a creepy moon shines brightly and all humans briefly turn into standing coffins. The emo kid in all of us is thriving right now. Those who have the power to summon personas, however, retain their humanity during this time, and it's not long before you get roped into joining an after-school club of other Persona users who have banded together to fight back against the shadows that emerge during this dark hour. Together you slowly explore and battle through an enormous tower that appears at night called Tartarus, hoping to find answers to all of this at the top. We appreciated the overall darker tone of the narrative, as death is a frequent theme that informs the events and decisions that take place over this 60 plus hour story. That's not to say P3P is missing its moments of levity though. There's certainly plenty of lighthearted high school antics many fans of the later games will be familiar with and expect. But there's a much heavier and more menacing vibe to the plot this time. This doesn't necessarily make it better or worse than the later releases in the series, but we did appreciate how it gives Persona 3 its own distinct kind of identity. The only shortcoming here is that the pacing can feel a little off in some places. Your progress through Tartarus is often gated at key points until you pass a certain in-game date, and there are times where it feels like the story is a little too stop and go. You'll defeat a boss, uncover or progress several interesting threads related to the main story, then be stuck for several in-game weeks spinning your wheels and feasting on breadcrumbs while waiting for your next major plot development to take place. Luckily, the gameplay is engaging enough that these slow periods are still enjoyable, but we still would have appreciated more evenly balanced plot development throughout. The gameplay follows the tried and true formula of mixing together life sim elements with more traditional dungeon crawling. By day, you go to school, hang out with your friends, and work part-time jobs. By night, you step into Tartarus with your friends and clear out floor after floor of shadows, all while picking up money and equipment along the way. Though it can take a few hours out of the gate for this gameplay loop to find its footing, things fit together impressively well once you get into a routine with your character and begin to pursue various goals for them. During the day, Time is your most precious and limited resource. You'll build up a stable of friends and allies via social links, and strengthening your relationships with each individual will see your character receive some important benefits when fusing new personas. The problem is, you usually only have time to hang out with one person after school each day, and that's if you choose not to work one of your jobs or participate in other activities. At times, it can feel incredibly real, but Worse yet, not spending enough time with a given social link or saying the wrong thing when you're with them can lead to your social link with them declining or breaking completely. 
which we suppose is also rather real. How you plan out your days and weeks can be a tricky balancing act as you attempt to maximize your character's abilities while mitigating any losses. Properly managing your day is important for success in your nighttime exploits, as it's the best way to receive funds for tricking your team out in better equipment and for ensuring you have the best personas available in combat. You usually have the option of visiting the Velvet Room whenever you please, and it's here where you can take existing personas and fuse them into new ones with better stats. Every persona corresponds to an arcana, which is in turn represented in one of your social links. Links. Raising a given social link thus has the effect of ensuring any fused personas that matches Arcana will get a bigger experience and stat boost. Though Persona Fusion can be rewarding, this is one area in which Persona 3 Portable feels the most dated. You can't manually choose which of a persona's skills will be inherited in the fusion, which can make it much more difficult to build your team exactly the way you want. We encountered many instances where we wanted to fuse two personas on our team that were getting too long in the tooth, but couldn't pull the trigger because the resulting persona wouldn't inherit any of their useful abilities. After a persona has reached a certain level, it does give you a skill card that lets you give that one skill to any persona you choose. But this feels like a time-consuming, roundabout, and incomplete way to ensure that each persona fills the role you need it to. Plus, the lack of manual skill inheritance feels especially egregious given that Atlas managed to add such a feature to the recent re-release of Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. If it could be added to that game, why couldn't the same be done here? Once you have a good Persona lineup in place, you can then head into Tartarus with your team, where there are literally hundreds of procedurally generated floors awaiting you. Tartarus is organized into blocks of a few dozen floors each, and your goal is to simply reach the end of your current block before the next major boss fight. Each floor only takes a few minutes to clear out, and you can be sure that you'll run into a handful of shadows along the way and find a few treasure chests to make exploring worthwhile. The design of Tartarus is perhaps one of the most divisive aspects of Persona 3 Portable, as things can get monotonous and repetitive quite quickly. Every floor within a block looks exactly like the one you just finished, while there's a complete lack of hazards or puzzles to break up constantly mapping out floor layouts. You run around, kill shadows, scoop up a few collectibles, then go up a floor and do the exact same thing. After doing this dozens of times, it's hard to not wish there was something more to flesh out this part of the gameplay loop, especially given that you spend so much of your total game time exploring floors. While in combat, things follow the series staple one more turn-based system. The goal is to identify a shadow's elemental weakness and cast an ability that exploits them, which will then net you one more turn with that character to act again. If you can manage to floor all the enemies before one of them gets a chance to get up, you can then trigger an all-out attack, where the whole team jumps in for a big super strike that hits all enemies all at once. Though the combat here is sorely missing some features that later arrived in the sequels, like the Baton Pass, it's enjoyable enough for what it is and manages to stay consistently engaging throughout. Now to address the elephant in the room, as we mentioned earlier, this release of Persona 3 is based on the PSP edition from 2009, which had to be substantially streamlined to ensure that everything could fit on a single UMD back then. This means that the various enhancements and additions added in Persona 3 FES, or FES, from the PlayStation 2, didn't make it over, and the 3D explorable overworld had to be cut as well. Instead of watching cutscenes and navigating town like in the PlayStation 2, to console release, the P3P experience instead is more like a visual novel with dungeon crawling sections. Needless to say, this feels quite dated in 2023 when playing on substantially more capable hardware, and we can't help but wonder why Atlas chose not to release a version of Persona 3 that integrated the features of both P3P and FES. Portable is fine, but it feels kind of like diet Persona. It's difficult to experience it after having played its successors without feeling like you're getting a distinctly lesser experience. 
instead of roaming the streets of Tokyo or Inaba while going on outings and dates with friends. You navigate menus and guide a simple blue circle over static images with things to click on. Instead of the memorable handcrafted dungeons of Persona 5, you navigate randomly generated and completely unremarkable dungeon floors that are each mostly indistinguishable from the last. This isn't to say that Persona 3 Portable is a bad experience, far from it. But you really have to reach to think of anything it does that its sequels don't do bigger and better. It feels like going back to play Metroid after having played Super Metroid. Everything is just simpler, more archaic, and less fun in many cases. The presentation, for its part, at least does a decent job of sticking to the visual novel aesthetic. Most of the static images you guide your cursor over have a nice painterly look to them, while the character portraits and dialogue sequences appear pleasingly sharp. The 3D models of characters and enemies in Tartarus may have a derpy and somewhat chibi appearance, but this is somewhat forgivable given the age of hardware they were designed for. And luckily, these simple graphics means that everything runs at a snappy, rock-solid 60fps on Switch, which helps keep the game feeling smooth throughout. As for its soundtrack, Persona 3 Portable mixes together pop, hip-hop, rock, and some jazz to make for an overall bouncy and upbeat track that contrasts nicely with the dark themes of the story. Of course, there are heavier tracks in there for combat and exploration to match the mood, but we'd say the soundtrack overall feels much more optimistic and chipper than you'd expect. It doesn't necessarily feel out of place with the narrative, either. What's here complements the heaviness with some much-needed carefree feelings. Feelings. Persona 3 Portable remains an enjoyable JRPG, but we would say this is easily the most skippable of the mainline Persona games on Switch as of right now. An engrossing story and well-balanced gameplay loop easily justify a purchase, though things like Tartarus's repetitive floors, the visual novel presentation, and the lack of FES content hold this one back from the heights its successors reached. We'd give Persona 3 Portable a recommendation though only after having played Persona 4 Golden and Persona 5 Royal, and only if you find yourself still needing more Persona in your life. This is still a great installment for Persona fans, and will be best appreciated by players who have that contextual series knowledge, but its rougher edges may put others off as well. We here at Nintendo Life give Persona 3 Portable on the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10. And with that, I'd like to thank you for making it to the end of the dark hour. And as a reward, I'd like to just give you a little bit more of my own feelings about this Persona 3 re-release on Nintendo Switch. Persona 3 is my favorite Persona game, but it's also probably due to the fact that it was my first. I really enjoy the darker tones, a lot of the characters, and just the way that the game plays out. But I feel like Mitch explained it really well in his review that this portable version isn't really necessary in the modern age. Well, parts of it aren't. And it's disappointing to see so many different features stripped away from that Persona experience that I remember because I played FES on PlayStation 2. And in that version, you are able to roam around a 3D world and you can chat with characters and see them moving on screen. And you get to see some pretty memorable and rad cutscenes throughout the game as well. But this portable version of the game has taken all of that and turned it into static images, kind of like the coffins, they, they don't move. And for me, it really breaks the immersion of the whole experience. And it's not that I'm not enjoying myself, it just makes me wish that I was playing FES instead. Now this portable version does bring along a few different features, one of which allows you to directly control your characters in battle. I believe there's a setting that you have to adjust in order to allow you to do that, but in the PlayStation 2 versions, they kind of take control of themselves, or you can give them guidance, but you can't actually select which attacks they make. And if you've played Persona 4 and 5, you'll know that that's a pretty big deal. Actually, controlling your party in any turn-based game is, is crucial. You want that. And this portable version also introduces the fact that you could play as a female main character as well, which I've never done myself, but I've heard that it drastically changes the way that the plot develops. So it's not that Persona 3 Portable doesn't have a place, it doesn't have a home, it's just that it is such a different experience than Persona 3 or Persona 3 FES. And I just really wish that Atlas would have found a way to mash all of these games up together instead. 
But of course, let us know in the comments down below if you're planning on picking up Persona 3 Portable on Nintendo Switch, if you've played it anywhere else before, if you've played other Persona games, let us know all of your Shimigami Tensei related thoughts down below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you watch that subscribe button turn into a coffin at the stroke of midnight. But I heard it only works if you've clicked the button. If not, it won't, it won't do it. And then ring that notification bell to be notified when it turns into a coffin. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you to Mitch for spending so much time with Persona 3 and Persona 4 as well, which we also reviewed on the channel and Felix did an adaption of, so go check that out too. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you all in Tartarus. Oh.